They can uh, just find unity in the church, um, wherever life takes them, Father God. Please be with them and guide them. Thank you for this day. Amen. Every chain, break every chain. 
Now, Pastor Mike will come up and give the announcement. Morning, church. Morning. Let's give another round of applause for our worship team. Thank you guys so much. That was a, that was a blessing to hear you guys worship like that. And uh, just uh, some, for some of you guys that came in late, I don't know if you, most of you guys got to partake in it, but we're going to start doing green time again. And I know everybody loves green time. We're going to start doing green time, though, at 11. So try to get here right on time at 11. You can get here a little early, but that's... We think that's going to be a good time for us to catch up and say hi to each other and uh, find out what's going on in each other's lives. So 11 o'clock, we'll do our new green time. And feel free to get up and, you know, see how everybody else is doing because, you know, we don't want to forsake the fellowship. And it's it's nice to come in and have corporate worship, but I think part of the church is being a family and you got to know what's going on in the family, you know what I mean? So, you know, be here or be square. That's kind of, would that be how people? Cool? And then I uh, just... Reminder, remember, remember to grab these to see what's going on in the bulletin. Uh, for some of you who may be uh, curious, it has the schedule for the food bank. They don't do the food bank um, after church anymore except for one Sunday. So the next Sunday they'll be doing after church will actually be May 9th. But it lets you know all the other days on the Tuesdays and Thursdays and then on uh, Saturdays from 9 to 11 a.m. But you must check in at 10.30 at Main Street. So, you know... Yeah, keep keep me straight in your prayers because they do do a lot and they help us out by letting us know about the food bank and all that stuff. So you let people know if they need a help in that aspect. Um, got a couple of announcements. Thank you for all those who did fill this out last week. Uh, we got it. We appreciate you. Just a reminder, if you need prayer requests or you um, are new and we just, just want to let, let us know who you are and stuff, fill these out and throw them in the offering basket. It um, helps us just to be able to intercede on your behalf and pray to the Lord. Um, Couple of announcements. We um, got some praises. Uh, Sarah, uh, she's home. Sarah Lacey's home, so praise God. Uh, you know, but we're gonna keep uh, praying for Brian as he helps take care of her while she recovers. But uh, I know they're probably at home right now. So, what's up, guys? Um, we're praying for you. We love you. We miss you. Can't wait to see you. Um, also, uh, our brother Artie Barcelo has his first rehab session next Friday already. So yeah. So I mean, he went to. Uh, extensive knee surgery, right? And he's ready, getting ready to start rehab. So that's a praise we want to give to the Lord because, I mean, it's not easy to come back after such a surgery. We already know because, like, a Jack, Susan, like, we've had a couple knee surgeries. I think, I think a couple more are going to be coming up, so we'll just keep bringing them before the Lord. Um, also, uh, Jasmine Hernandez, she's going to be getting baptized today. Ooh, yeah, that's exciting, right? I don't know how to talk about that. Um, it's a, one of those things that we just, uh, it's an exciting time, it's uh, Baptism Sunday, and uh, it's a little smaller, right? we got, it might have been the bigger churches where they have a really big one, but we think it's, it's even cooler here because it's, it's personal, we get to see our sister today and get baptized and make that declaration to the Lord, so we are so grateful to the Lord for that. Um, so it's going to be after service, so all of y'all, I know you guys probably got things to do and breakfast to eat or whatever, but... Stay a little bit longer and let's uh, get this baptism going. And then um, the Lord has given Ronnie Drone a brand new ankle. And that's what it said. I, 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 it must be brand, brand new. What, what's going on with that, Jack? Uh, he couldn't. It was, they had to put a, a thing in it, a, a, some kind of device so he could bend it. So it was kind of hard to bend it now. Oh, nice. So this is literally a brand new ankle. Like, yeah. Praise God. That's a, yeah, they it. And they, they changed the grab Oh, wow, that's so awesome. Uh, thank you, Lord, for that. And then, um, also, I don't know if you guys noticed, but Brother Ray has some eye surgery. That's why I haven't seen him with his glasses. But it, the, the eyes are getting better. So, I mean, the Lord is doing amazing things. And Ray is also continuing, being able to continue his ministry on Wednesday nights um, by making to-go dinners with uh, Brother Gary Lee in a Bible study at 6.30. So feel free to come in on those uh, those nights, Wednesday. I think uh, if you get here at 6, you get some food. 6.30, get some Bible studies, some spiritual food. It's going to be great. We do got some prayer requests. We're going to take before the Lord today before we get started with the uh, rest of the service. Um, our sister T, I know she's watching at home on Facebook. Glad, uh, we, we love you, we miss you, but she has a torn rotator cuff and her and on her other shoulder because she had surgery a while back, but now she has another surgery coming up May 6th. 
So let's uh, continue to take that before the Lord and pray that the Lord heals it and uh, takes care of the doctor's hands as they're in there. And uh, we, we know the Lord's going to handle it, but we still like to come before him and bring our sister before him. Um, also, um, our brother Robert, he's back home. Uh, he's uh, Robert Avila Sr. We know his son and his daughter-in-law and those two wonderful boys. So we praise God and we just want to keep on praying that he uh, finds a job because now he needs a job now that he's home. Um, we're still praying for Brian and uh, Sarah as they are going through things. I think um, actually Brian's going to be need prayer for a new job as well, but we know uh, one door closes, another one opens with the Lord. It never stays shut, you know. And then uh, also we want to lift up uh, Deshauna Stewart and Justin Jackson. Um, have already cleared some hurdles, but they need the Lord's help with some more. So, so we're going to lift them. Yeah, they're right there. If you haven't met them, say hello to them. That's why you need to be here at 11 so you can meet, meet them. So, so, but uh, right there, make sure you, you get to uh, say hi to them before they take off. And then um, we just uh, also want to lift up Sophia Rose, right? She, she, she's, uh, she's the little girl that's going through surgery. And we just want to lift her up. And just everyone else, you know, that uh, God knows what you need. And we're just going to bring that before him. So we could all just uh, close our eyes and bow our heads and just ask the Lord to bless this time. Lord, uh, first and foremost, thank you for who you are and what you're doing in our lives. You've already blessed this time so much by just allowing us to be here. Lord, we pray that our worship glorifies you, Lord. Lord, we come before you on the behalf of our brothers and sisters as you continue to be beside them and help them clear so many hurdles. We know there's always going to be so, much, so many more in front of us. But like we were singing earlier, we are more than overcomers, Lord. Lord, it says you have overcome this world, so we should take heart because we'll overcome it as well Amen. with you in our lives. For in Christ, all things are possible. Lord, bless this uh, time of worship. Uh, just, just bless every single soul here, Lord. And for our sisters and our brothers that need healing, such as... Artie and Sarah and T and they're getting ready to go through a season of more healing Lord we know you are the great healer you are the great physician Lord and you will never fail us for if you are for us who could be against us Lord Lord we love you we thank you we pray this all in your name Jesus Amen, Amen. Um, if I could uh, call the worship team up uh, I'll, I'm going to see you you're going to do the offering prayer my brother no way and then yep Thank you. Amen. So I just want to thank uh, just uh, Elvira and you know uh, Miranda and Catalina. They've been helping with the uh, nursery. Uh, so that's a blessing. So I just want to thank that, thank them for that. And uh, also, uh, if you're up for being put in that rotation, talk to our sister Elvira up here. Um, it's, it's such a blessing. Uh, it takes a village to raise our children. Um, with that, let us uh, give it to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you. For all the blessings, thank you for our church family. And uh, you have given us the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, uh, and to walk like Christ did. Um, in that, we got to help out our, our neighbors, love our neighbors as our, ourselves. And um, we're family. We help out each other. And we. We don't um, hold any accounts wrong against one another. And uh, thank you for the blessings. Uh, everything comes from you. Uh, we know that. And uh, I just pray for my brothers and sisters. If they are being blessed uh, with, with work, with uh, health, with time, um, to give freely to give freely and uh, 
donation of our, our time um, could help out so much in the body. We're one body in Christ. Uh, but let us not take away from the offering uh, that is uh, financially. Uh, so we just pray that you soften our hearts and be able to give freely how it was given to us. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. amen. You ready to sing some more? If you'll stand and sing these last songs with us. <clears throat> or sit, whatever you <laughs> As long as you're singing and raising your voices. Yeah, we put the songs on our group too. <laughs> yeah, we got it on the on our Facebook page. So if you're ever curious what we're doing, uh, singing on Sunday, then just check that out and you can be practicing just like we are, prepared ready to uh, just raise the roof and sing for our Lord. Yeah.
and uh, my mom will lead us heading to the nursery, so if you want to send the babies over there. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Ali. You're amazing. Thank you so much, team. Can we give another round of applause? Thank you everybody for uh, being here today. If my brother Noe would bring me an HDMI cable, that'd be amazing. Or, where's that brother? I got you. Oh. All right. I'm just doing your sound. Oh, yeah, see? Yes, thank no way. No way is always in the background taking care of business. Thanks, you, brother, no way. Captain no way. That's hard for the Lord. You've been on fire as of late. And it's just contagious. So, love you, man. Over 11 years. <laughs> Over 11 years. Been burning bright. But even brighter today. Oh, let's see if we can make this all happen. From the beginning. Oh yeah. How's everybody doing? Good. Praise God, right? Are you here? Right? I think that's a pretty good, that's a victory in itself. You made it. That's half the battle. <laughs> um, let's uh, go ahead and I want to pray really quick to the Lord and uh, let, let's, just, let's just be rejoiceful. Let, let, let's rejoice in the Lord today. You know, I know you guys got a pastor like me that probably doesn't know what he's doing half the time, but we rejoice in that. I was kidding. <laughs> because I stay humble, and I think that's the only thing I could do is uh, I'm humbled by the fact that you guys will even allow me to come up here and preach to you guys on Sunday. So I want to just thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. But if we could just lift the Lord up in prayer, I just want to thank you. But um, I did want to uh, show you guys a picture really quick. This guy sent to me the other day. This is Sophia Rose right here on your guys' left-hand side. Um, she's the one we're praying for when, we, when we're talking about her. And, you know, if you guys got pictures and you want to us to lift anybody up, uh, you know, feel free to send them. But we want to just let you know, like, this, this you know, when we're, we're, we're doing prayer requests and we're doing it, you know, we, we know the fact. It's, it's real real implications of that prayer. And we, we strongly believe in the, in the power of prayer. Because we know that God, and I, I love this in Isaiah 46, he, he reminds us that he'll sustain us, that, that he made us, that he'll carry us, and that he'll rescue us. So we could just uh, lift up this uh, little girl to the Lord one more time, because I, I really believe God's going to do a strong miracle in her. So you guys can bow your heads and close your eyes. Father God, Lord, we uh, rejoice in knowing that the fact of the matter is that you love us. And you loved us first. That's why we love you. Lord, there's this uh, little girl that just has a heart of gold that just that needs you now. I wish she's always going to need you, but right now she needs you to just come into her life and heal her, Lord. To so just use those around her to uh, to make her strong. It says in our weakness, you show your strength, Lord. So just make this little girl as strong as she needs to be to get through all these trials that she's going to be going through in this season, Lord, as she goes through surgery. And I just pray that the doctors do do the, your will, Lord, and they just come in and they, they're able to take care of all, all that needs to be taken care of. Yes. Lord, we uh, love you. We thank you. We pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes, yes, ma'am. She just lost her father. She, she really, she lost her, uh, Sophia Rose lost her father? Yeah. Day after Easter. I don't know if you guys heard that. That's our sister Rita, and she was just letting us know that Sophia Rose lost her uh, father the day after Easter because he fell asleep while driving. Yeah. So, so this is, I mean, you know, kind of, you know, like if you had a stressful day, you know what I mean, or a hard day waking up this morning, kind of reminds you, of course, things in the perspective that, you know, hey, there's, there's things going on in people's lives that you can't even fathom. I mean, this is a little girl, she's going through all of this, and that that's why. That's why we believe that the Lord, He heals us, right? And He's with us and He can deliver us. And we would give it to Him. Because we know our burdens are heavy, but it says His are light. So He says, give, give me your burdens and I'll take yours. And He'll carry them for us. 
Um, what we're supposed to continue to keep this little this little angel in your in your, uh, in your prayers. You know, Sophia Rose. When you when you go to bed tonight, you know, just lift her up because she's gonna she's gonna need it, and she still she she needs it now more than ever right after losing losing her father as well. I also wanted to uh, my wife she she walked away because my son was in uh, behaving, but six years ago today. I got married right here in this church. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you tell me you married six years. My wife saw He's talking about here. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. My son, he's, he's like at that age where he's like, I'm ready to do things. But no, yeah, six years ago, we uh, we got married. And, you know, it's, it's, it, it's crazy to think about this. God, God is just doing so many things in our lives. Good or Good or during the good and during the bad. We just call that life, right? Like in, in the midst of someone's storm, there could be uh, sunshine in someone else's life. You know, but like, you know what uh, connects us is, is Jesus Christ. And, and we could rejoice in him knowing the fact that, hey, you know, I'm going to be there for my sister today and she'll be there for me tomorrow. Because, you know, she may be going through something hard today and I'm going to be going through something joyous today. But you know what, we're, we all can bank on the joy of Jesus Christ who is our hope. So that's what I just wanted to let you guys know is that every day we rejoice in the Lord. Yes. Even amidst the hard days. So if you guys have been with us for the last couple of months, right? We've been doing this series called Living Water. Our uh, brother blessed us last week with uh, a sermon called Who Sinned? And we were in chapter 9 of uh, John. And I get to bless us today by finishing up chapter 9. And if you guys got your Bible, you'll see a little header called Spiritual Blindness. And I feel like that was a, that was a title. That was a, you can't really go through another title. You know, like, but when you get to this point about spiritual blindness, what did Jesus do? He healed somebody who was physically blind. And, and, and it was funny because, you know, as, a, as a, we're going through it last week, it was, all he heard was these Pharisees just, they, they weren't even excited about the fact that this guy who was born blind was, do you see now? You would think that would be something someone would be like, wow, that's pretty awesome. They were all caught up in the fact like, well, how can you see? Hey, what, what are you talking about? How can I see? Like, I can see. That should be like enough of a miracle, right? Like, like and you, you'll get that today because, you know, like people are like, oh, I'm saved. And they're like, well, how are you, how are you saved? I don't know what I'm saying, man. Isn't that exciting? Like, I am saved in Christ Jesus. And people always, they, you know, they're analytical or they, 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 they're they skeptical. You know, some people are just, you know, they're just pessimistic. You know, it's not their fault. Like, uh, like uh, Thomas, right, one of the disciples, everybody calls him Daddy Thomas. He was, he was just a faithful pessimist. You know, he just, he, he, he wasn't, you know, we all doubt sometimes he was just pessimistic. Some are optimistic, some are pessimistic. Like, you know, like when he's just like, oh, I guess we'll just all go with Jesus and die. You know, he, he's still going. He was just kind of like on the pessimistic side. Like, I don't know. You know, but like, I mean, it was, it was just so crazy because you, you're reading the story and you think these Pharisees would be excited for this guy. Even if you didn't know the guy or you didn't like the guy. I mean, you can see now. It's a miracle. And, and, and here they are just not even overlooking the miracle and all caught up in their own self-righteousness because they didn't like the way it happened. And, and, and I see that throughout the world today where people are just like, hey, I, I like the idea of Jesus, but I don't like the church. Or I like the idea of being saved, but I, know I don't want to be saved with that guy or, or that lady. And we're, we're, we're very skeptical or we're very like standoffish. We're like, no, I'm not, I'm not digging it. And, and so Jesus and this Thing he's going to talk about their spiritual blindness because that's what it really is. Is we become blind to the fact of what we need, or we become blind to the fact of being thankful for what they needed. Like right, we put on the uh, the blinders. We don't want to see. We don't want to see what makes us uncomfortable. It, it, it's easy. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of it as anybody else. It's, it's a whole lot easier not to look. Like when you see something that, that may cause you uh, emotion or pain or like uneasiness, what was the best thing? Look away, right? We learned that as a kid. I learned it as a kid because, you know, 
like back in the day, they didn't have too many like uh, sensors and stuff. So my sensor was my mom, right? And so I'd like, close your eyes, you know, and peek in terms of, you know, <laughs> trying to try to see what you know. That was that was my sensor, you know. But which you know, we, we learned that from a really young age, like you know, our parents or our, our people around us, they try to prevent us from seeing anything that may not may cause us harm or may cause us emotions that they don't want us to have, don't want to explain, right? So now we, we learn that as we get older and we become blinded spiritually because we decide just to close our whole minds off to it. I mean, for the longest time, I didn't even know I was a sinner. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know why he has left. I don't know. I'm just saying. I was an angel. No, just kidding. I, that's my mom. She's right there. No, no but, like, but like, I, I think we could all probably relate to that, right? Like, it took somebody to tell me, Mike, you're a sinner, to realize like I was a sinner. And these guys, these Pharisees, it took Jesus, and they, some of them still didn't see it. That's why they're, it was so bad. Is he was revealing to them that their righteousness just fell flat. And then yet here they were just thinking that, no, I, what are you talking about? I got it all figured out. But the reason for this spiritual blindness is because there's this, this guy who is the enemy of our souls. And, and Paul puts it eloquently in 2 Corinthians, but it says, Satan, who is God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. You know how he blinded us? By letting us know that, like, ah, you guys got this. Like, I was like, yeah, I just kind of you could go back to Genesis. You know, right, when sin first entered the world, what, what did he go to Eve? He's like, did God really say you couldn't eat anything off of the trees? They just, just put a little bit, a little seed of doubt, right? And now he does that in all, if you, if you look in this world today, what does he do? He keeps just putting little, little seeds of doubt that just, just fester into our minds where we're just like, we, we become blinded by it. We, we, we become more uh, dependent on ourselves, on the people around us or on this world, right? I mean, you, 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 you probably saw a good example of that during this pandemic. People, instead of turning to God, a lot of people were turning to science. Science is good, I'm not saying God uses science to help us get through things, but you know, like when we start depending on another person, what was the problem with humans? We're all flawed. So we're all gonna eventually get let down by that person. For ourselves. In Matthew 13, 15, it says, For this people's hearts are wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and should, and I should heal them. That's Jesus talking. He's saying, because of this blindness that the Satan has put into our hearts, like it just becomes gross. Like they start, they start calling things that are bad, good, and things that are good, bad. That, that's, the, that's the spiritual blindness that you see in this world right now. He, he has us convinced that the things that we know are good or bad, and the things that we know are bad or good. And by doing that, he, he's, he's, he thinks he's getting a, a hold on us. Or, uh, a foothold on us, right? He's, he's trying to gain victory. But I'm here to tell you right now is he has no victory on us because Jesus Christ won on the cross a long time ago. That's why he said it is finished. And we, we have victory in Christ. So we are able to go to the Lord and ask him to open the eyes of the blind, right? Or like in Acts 26, 18, it says, open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. We have that authority to go and intercede on them and say, Satan, not today, right? Or what does it say? Not today, Satan. But we don't, we don't give them all the credit because we give them too much credit. That's, that's not good either. Yeah. The biggest thing is we got to have ourselves and look at it because what does it say? The, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. I mean, I, I mean, as, as much as the pain to say, because I look at myself in the mirror and I know I'm weak. But what I, what I say earlier is, through our weakness, God shows His strength. So just depend on Him. But like I said, it was awesome. 
last week, right, when he was healing this guy that was born blind, like they're trying to be like, well, who did it? Why did it happen? All this and that. And I, and I love it because he said it just kind of the same way like most of us had probably did it. He puts it this way. One thing I do know is I was blind, but now I see. Like, you know, when I was first a believer, I had no answers, really. All of a sudden, people were just like, well, Mike, you seem like you're just, like something different about you, you know, like, what happened? I'm like, man, I came to Jesus. <laughs> and people be like, oh, well, how? <laughs> well, huh? Like, well, why? Well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, you know I, I didn't have answers. But I love that. As, as you grow in your faith, you become to get answers. You begin to have that defense of why you have faith in Christ. But I'm going to let you know is, this guy, he, he just got his sight restored, right? And the thing he could do is just bank on the excitement of what it was. And I'm gonna, I want to reassure you right now is that sometimes it takes a, test, a simple testimony as such as that is just to let him know, is, hey, I may not know all the verses and all the Bible uh, quotes and all that stuff, but guess what? All I do know is that I am saved. Like if you were saved in Christ, that's the testimony you want to give. Because I like this uh, little quote, but it says, Someone who is nearsighted needs corrective glasses, but when someone is blind, they need a miracle of sight. And men come into the world as blind as a bat spiritually. And unless God sovereignly opens their eyes to see the truth, they will perish in their blindness. So, like, I love this. Like, we're, 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 we're trying to. Because then this is the wonder full thing about John. It talks about the spiritual, it talks about the physical. We can see the implications of the physical because it's right there. That's, that's, that's exciting news that this guy was blind and now you see. But the more exciting news, the more amazing thing was now he's about to see something that God wishes for all people to see and that is who Jesus Christ is. Because the spiritual aspect is what's important. I'm not saying like he's, you're better off physically blind and spiritually blind but you are for if your it says if your eye causes you to sin Jesus says go as as far as plucking it out right pretty much what he's saying he's saying if anything is going to hold you back from going to heaven get rid of it and right now the reason why this guy was so open to seeing who Jesus was because he never saw before that's the idea is these Pharisees they thought they knew it all they thought they had seen it all so they were open to the, to the idea of the gospel or of the news of who Jesus Christ was because they already made up their mind who God was and how it was going to be. And so Jesus uses this example to, to reveal to them who he is. Because if you guys remember where Mike left off, what did they do? They ostracized him. They just threw him out. They got tired of this guy talking about this Jesus. Like one of his best statements was like, Hey, I may not know much about the law and all this stuff or been as educated as you are. He says, but what I do know is that this guy healed me. And if he can heal me, that must be from the Lord. And they really got mad at that and they kicked him out of the synagogue. After hearing this, Jesus found the man and he goes to him. And this is in verse uh, 935 through 38 of John. He goes to the guy, and uh, I mean, imagine how this guy feels, because if you were to get kicked out of synagogue, that, that pretty much means you're kicked out of society. It's like, it's like pretty much he, he has no right to worship no more or to be a part of anything. Like, and he was already an outcast <laughs> because he was blind. He was already just struggling to get by, but now that he thinks he's going to get accepted in, he gets kicked right out. But so Jesus goes to him and finds him, and, he, and this, is, this is the implications of what Jesus wants to, us to learn today, is he says to him, do you believe in the Son of Man? And the man said, who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him right then and there. Now that's what Jesus was trying to give to him. Yeah, he gave him sight. And that was an amazing thing, but he wanted to give him the truth. And who is the truth, the way in life? That is Jesus Christ. I love that. Like, like this, there's going to be arguments in the world. Is like, well, Jesus never really claimed to be God. Oh, there you go, right there. A title for the Messiah. 
with the Son of Man. So by him saying, do you believe in the Son of Man? He's asking, do you believe that there's going to be a Messiah? Is there going to be a Savior one day? Yeah, yeah. yeah who is he? What's up? I want, to, I want in on this. And he says, let me know who he is. And I'll, and I, and I'll, I'll, I'll go worship him right there. And what does Jesus do? He says, I am he. That, that's one of those examples. Because Jesus, he, if, he, if he wasn't God, he would not allow somebody to worship him. And he allows this man to worship him right then and there. Now that's, that's what's so wonderful about this story. If we get all caught up in the, in the him scene, I know I do. <laughs> and I, I think those things are cool. We, we pray for healing all the time. Because we because the, the ailments of today, they're real. The struggles of today are real. The hardships of today are real. And we we want comfort. We want we want relief from that. That guy begged every day to get get by on his life because he was born blind. That means from birth until then, he struggled all his life. And, and now Jesus helped him with his eyes, but he helped him with more than that. He gave him something to rejoice in and let him know you have the Son of Man right in front of you. You have God in front of you. I came down from heaven to be with you. That is, that is so awesome. And so Jesus lets him know, well, this is, this is why I came. Then Jesus said, I came into this world to show what people are really like. Then people who know they are blind will be able to see. And people who think they can see will become blind. So this is a, another way of saying people who know they are sinners can be saved. And people who believe themselves not to be sinners, they'll be lost. Because like I was telling you a couple weeks back, the only, un, the only unforgivable sin is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And, and I did a lot of stories. I didn't understand what that meant. But pretty much Jesus is saying, the only thing I can't forgive is the sin you don't ask to be forgiven for. Like if you don't ask for forgiveness, guess what? I can't forgive you. But to ask for forgiveness, you've got to understand that you need to be forgiven. That, that's, that's, the, that's the pivotal point. Is that, hey, if, if we don't know the diagnosis, then we can never find the cure. And I know that that's, that's, that's what Jesus is about. Like, God's about cure. He's not about, uh, what is that? He's not about a vaccine or a, a temporary fix, something that you're going to have to keep going back and getting renewed. He said, once and for all, you are cured, you are healed, you are saved. <gasps> He said, I came to reveal that to those who know they need to be saved. They're going to ask to be saved. He says, but there's going to be those who think they already are. And we know who he's talking about. He's talking about those, those Pharisees, those self-righteous people. The, those, those, those religious people that are already thought they, they already figured it out. Here in Isaiah 42, 16, it says, And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. So he's saying, those who know that they're blind and they need guidance, I'll guide them. Like it, it, it's, it's tough for me to ask for help. For a long time, I was a very prideful man. I'm still a prideful man. I'm a man. I got one of my favorite quotes is the best of men are still men at best. The dollars are big, right? Like, it's, it's just we we're, we're falling, we're broken, and, and I struggle and the, the, the needing of help, right? I need some help, and sometimes I'm like, I can do it myself, and I get all frustrated. And then I see my son do it, and I'm like, oh man, he got he, like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, son, let me help, and he's like, I got this, you know, and then he, he stresses himself out. That's, that's, that's me. It, was, it wasn't until I fell flat on my face. And I'm surprised my nose is still where it's at because it's fallen more times than I can count. But every time I've fallen and I've gotten up, it, it was until I asked for help to get up. And the Lord helped me up every time. Amen. And, and the thing is, is he's saying those who realize their blindness, those who understand that they are broken and flawed and can't do it on their own, he's saying those are the ones I'm going to be able to help and guide. Because that's what I'm here to do. But for those who 
aren't willing to ask. They're just gonna, they're gonna keep wandering and doing their own thing. Like the blind leading the blind. Because listen, listen to the statement of these Pharisees. Because the Pharisees are standing right there while he's saying all these things, right? Like he wouldn't have found them then. And, you know, everybody's like, oh, there he is. I, I, could, I, I like to like kind of think about the background of what's going on. Like I wonder if the audience is just literally like watching like, oh, I think that's who they're looking for. Oh, look, at, he's talking to, you know, like, I don't know. Just a lot of, I don't think it'd be exciting to be there at these times. But it says the Pharisees were there too. And some of the Pharisees, which were with him, heard these words, and they said unto him, Are we blind also? Like, that could be a genuine question. You would think, like, well, maybe there's... Hey, we should always ask for forgiveness. Um, you know, because it's one of those things. If you don't ask for forgiveness, you can't be forgiven. You know what I mean? It's, it's one of those things. Is <clears throat> Moses? He did mess up when he when he went in front of God and he struck that rock. And when he struck that rock and he gave water to them, he didn't give glory to God first, and he didn't make it to the promised land. But he's very much in heaven. No, he and he is. And uh, so these Pharisees right now are asking, are we spiritually blind? Because it's real easy to uh, get really worked up, right? When you hear something that may entice something in your heart or you may disagree with. So they're like, hey, how are you going to say that we're blind? Because they, they know the implications of what Jesus is saying. He's saying right now, he's saying like, hey, if you guys really think you know all there is to know, about what I'm saying, then you're not hearing me. You guys, you guys are more blind than this man. Because what's going on is they they know he was physically blind. And now these now that he's can see, now he's actually telling them, he's teaching them a thing or two about scripture. And they're like, hey, we know more than him. That's kind of the idea. Because these, these parents are literally trying to step in and say, I know more than what this guy is saying. And Jesus says to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But since you say, we see your sin remains. So, so he said, well, since you're saying to him, like, we're better than you pretty much, or we know more, or pretty much we're not sinners, because that, that was the idea back then. They thought this guy was blind or born blind because he messed up and he sinned and he was, like, he deserved it, right? And they thought they were blessed and all that stuff because they were righteous and they knew what they needed to do. And he's saying, no, on the contrary, he's going to be forgiven for his sins because he understands that he was a sinner. You are never going to be forgiven for your sins because you think you are so righteous that you don't need it. But he uses the, the idea of sight and seeing. Because he's saying if you were ignorant of it, or if you were blind to it, if you didn't know the scriptures, then maybe you would have a chance. But the problem is, we all know what's right from wrong. It's called a conscience. We, we got it. We know when it's the time to say something or when it's time not to say something. Like we have a conscience in our, in our like as I was a little kid, you kind of know when you're like, ah, maybe, maybe I shouldn't do this. I remember as a kid, I was, I was very easy. It was like the Jiminy Cricket and uh, Pinocchio. I was real easy for me to push him to the side, you know, like, get out of my way. I'm going to go and hang out with the boys. I don't know. I think in the movie, you go smoke cigars and drink root beer. But, I, I mean, like, it was easy to, like, silence your conscience. Now that you have the Holy Spirit, it's not so easy. The Holy Spirit is going to convict you every time. But what Jesus is trying to let him know is, if you guys were blind, at least you would have an excuse. You don't have an excuse now. You guys know the truth of what God wants. That's what, then he, he was a little bit more harder on them because since they knew the truth, since they knew what was right, he knew that they were doing it intentionally. It says in James 4, 17, so any person who knows what is right to do but does not do it, to him it is sin. He's saying if you know what is right and you don't do it, then you are more, you're going to be held more accountable than the person who didn't know that's why, that's why it always says here in James 3.1, but it's, it's always good to be careful of what you uh, preach and what you teach. 
Because it says, let not many of you become teachers, my brethren, knowing that as such we will incur a stricter judgment. For in the way you judge, you will be judged, and by your standard of measure, it will be measured too. So, if I come up here and I tell you guys something about what we shouldn't be doing and then you can't be doing it, guess who's going to get in more trouble? Me. <laughs> My, yeah, I know what that's, but that's the idea. It's because if I have the gall to call you blind, then I better be able to see, right? And that's what, that's what Jesus is trying to tell these Pharisees. Like, you have the gall to call this guy blind, but you guys are more blind than he is. And so we want to tread carefully when we go out that we don't go and preach ourselves, right? And in uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 5 and 6, it says, For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of the darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So what does he say? He's saying, we don't preach ourselves. We don't try to lift ourselves up. All we do is preach Christ. So what are we doing? We are just acknowledging the fact that, hey, I was once lost, but now I'm found. I was once a sinner, but now I'm saved. I was once broken, now I'm fixed. You know, like, but pretty much who gets all the glory? Not me. Like, we shine so that way they can see God shine through us. If we could all stand up. I wanted to end with uh, this verse before we pray because it says, it says for all those who are out there, and you, and you, you got some, if there could be some here today or some watching on the line, on the internet, but you may have some, some people in your family, but what we could do today is we could pray to the Lord that to open their ears or to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness and from the power of Satan that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Jesus is saying, if you are in God today, you could do all these things. You could help them turn from their darkness and turn to light. You could be that example. So we're going to pray for all those who may be in the darkness today. Or today. For, all, for any of those who... You may have in your heart right now, I want you just to think of them and, and, and lift them up in prayer right now. Because there's more than not who are spiritually blind who are lost in the darkness. So if you guys all close your eyes and bow your heads and open your hearts. Let's pray that the eyes of those who are blind be open, Lord. Lord, I pray that you soften their hearts to the message of the good news, Lord. Lord, reveal to them that you have a heart, a heart for them, Lord, that wants to give them everything they need. Lord, reveal yourself to them and reveal to them the truth. The truth is that they need you today more now than ever, for today is the day of salvation. I lift up all those here today, Lord. Lord, that they could, they could bank on the fact that you, who are God, is here for them, that you died for them, that you paid their debt that they owe. And all that needs to be done is for them to come to you and ask for forgiveness, to repent of their sins, and to receive your mercy and grace. love you because you first loved us. And we thank you. We pray all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we got a exciting thing to do right now. The sister is about to uh, be baptized. Oh, you still got that? Cool. So in that in that time, some of you guys you guys don't want to stay. We encourage all of y'all to stay. But we also got some prayers, so we got to do some prayer while we get things ready. So we're gonna have some uh, elders standing at the corners. Um, Brian, Mike, 
you know, uh, myself, you guys need prayer, come get prayer, but as they get everything ready for the baptism, you know, uh, come get some prayer, you know, go ahead and come up here and, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's enjoy this time. You guys, and then, you said an hour? We're getting ready. And then when it's time, I'll let you guys know and we'll get this started. You got baptized last week, right? Yes. Tell us a little bit about you. Oh, my name is Juan Hernandez. I'm Jasmine's uh, husband. We've been together for uh, 13 years and two years married. So he's here to help us. Amazing, amazing. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Jesse? A little bit about your testimony. <clears throat> uh, hi, everyone. My name is Jasmine Hernandez, and today I am being baptized because I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Yeah. And the Lord has helped me through my dark times of sadness and depression, and He has given me the peace in my heart and in my mind to know that I am His child and that He loves me. And that there is nothing that I have to be worried about because I'm in his hands. So from this day moving forward, I give myself to the Lord and I want to walk with Jesus Christ and uh, share my testimony with others to be able to help them and just share my story because God is good. Jasmine, do you believe Jesus Christ paid for your sins, past, present, future, by dying on the cross and rising from the dead? Yes, I do. Are you ready to follow him as the Lord of your life? Yes. Then we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brother Gary, I ask Brother Gary if you would do the Lord's Prayer after this and kind of. You know, uh, give give you all the blessings. So the Lord's prayer, something new, and then we're gonna pray as a congregation, and um, you know, give our blessings and protection. Send the Holy Spirit before them, and the, we pray that the Holy, the, the blood of Jesus Christ protects them. But go ahead, brother. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 If you please rise and then we'll, uh, you know, uh, send our blessings to Juan and, and uh, Jasmine. But, uh, dear Heavenly Father, uh, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, with the power of the Holy Spirit, 
Thank you. We, as we baptize our sister in the fire of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, so we can come to you. Um, we we uh, ask that Jesus Christ covers them in his blood forever. Takes them by the hand as we walk in victory. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, I ask for protection, especially in the beginning stages. As we are not playing church here, we are for the kingdom and we are out to save souls. Uh, you have sent us to preach the gospel to the poor and release the oppressed. We have victory. We know this. But some of our brothers and sisters are in dark places. And for us to go get them, we got to put ourselves there and be the light. And I pray that you give them the wisdom and the power of the Holy Spirit through the Holy Spirit to guide them, to protect them, and to bless their, their family. I pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.